Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus seems to be pretty harsh in this reading. First, he says that it is as difficult for a wealthy person to enter the kingdom of God as it is for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. And then he goes on to say that it is impossible for a wealthy person to be saved. And some of you might sit back and think, whew, dodged that bullet. I'm not wealthy after all. In the reality of living paycheck to paycheck, or simply trying to make ends meet, you don't think of yourself as wealthy. But the truth is that many of you, if not most, or even all of you, place hope in your possessions and you live like you're wealthy even if you don't think of yourself as wealthy. But it doesn't matter about your bank account or your income to be saved. Jesus makes it clear. To be saved with man, it is impossible. Where do you look to be saved? Sitting here in church, there's a very clear and obvious answer. We look to Jesus. We look to the gifts of God in order to be saved. But when things get difficult, do you really look to God? Do you really emphasize those God-given things? I don't. The places you look might be to your bank account, to buy your way out of trouble and to fix your problems. Or you might look to doctors and nurses or therapists. Maybe you go to your friends or your family to get you out of trouble. But realistically, that might make things better for a little while. But that's not being saved. That's a few minutes of reprieve. It doesn't save you from the enormity and the hugeness of your problems. But how big are your problems after all? Just how big are they? Your problems, they don't stop with a pandemic or with sadness, with sickness or grief. Your problems aren't contained to the mistakes that you've made and the ways that you've hurt people. You have a problem with God. Or, more properly, God has a problem with you, with your sin, and with your sinfulness. The Lord your God is a jealous God, and He is angry when you look to other things for salvation. Looking to your riches is vanity. They don't do anything for you. Looking for a raise for your stability That won't do it. How can a young man or any person keep their way pure? Only by the word of God. If you try to do it by yourself, you will have as much luck as a camel trying to squeeze through the eye of a needle. Now, if you've ever taken a needle and tried to simply pass thread through the eye of the needle, it can be pretty difficult. But a camel going through an eye of a needle? That is just simply flat out absurd. And that is how absurd you look when you try to save yourself from your own problems. It just doesn't work. And God is rightly angry when you try to do that. Psalm 5 says, For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. That's you and me. The Lord is out to destroy your sin and your deceit and your selfishness. You can't save yourself from that. But with God, it is possible You and your evil and your wickedness and your deceit were put to an end when Jesus did something even more absurd than pass through the eye of a needle. 
He, God in the flesh, went to the cross, suffering and dying, going through not an eye of a needle, but the gate of the tomb. Not because he is evil, but because you are. He put his death on you when you were baptized, saying, here in this water, I have called you my own, because I have put my name and my word in this water and on you. And you might be tempted to think, well, that sounds pretty absurd, that God could save somebody through water. But that is exactly what your Lord has done for you. Putting his name on you, uniting you into his death and into his resurrection. And therefore, God is no longer angry with you. God loves you and sees you as an heir who receives eternal life. You are saved from God's anger because of his absurdly loving death. There's no room for you to tell Jesus how faithful you've been to him. There's only room for you to see your desire to fix your own problems and to cry out, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, I can't do it. There is no way. Lord, I deserve nothing but your punishment and your anger. And yet I ask you not to punish me for my evil. That's the cry of the church. And that's the cry of the Christian. That's why we use that prayer in the divine service each week, just like we did this morning. When someone is sick, when someone dies, when terrible things happen in the world, when we recognize our own sin and sinfulness and evil, we cry out, Lord, have mercy. Don't give us what we deserve. And by the death and the resurrection of Jesus applied to you, your gracious Lord, Jesus Christ, is, has been, and will continue to be merciful to you, even as he brings you into eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ.